Hello friends. So in the previous session, we have derived the EMF induced for a particular machine and we found out that the EMF induced is proportional to the flux inside the machine, the speed at which it is rotating and also a geometric constant which is the machine constant. All right. So in this particular session, we are going to start with the torque induced in a current carrying loop. Already we have discussed all these topics in the DC machines, but let us uh, generalize this equation a little bit more so that can be, be it will be useful to understand the concepts of AC machine. So let's begin. So this is the coil ABCD flux is from left to right and I've just put an additional component which is called the area vector component and this is perpendicular to the area of the uh, loop. All right. So this is our loop and this has the geometry like this. So this is the length L of the loop and this distance will be R. Okay. Or we can tell that the total width will be Okay. Now, as usual, like in the previous session, we are going to just a little bit, we are going to tilt the loop like this. Okay. So we are tilting the loop a little bit. Okay. So this is north, this is south and we are sending current in this direction. So I forgot to mention that we are sending some current because this is a current carrying loop. Okay. Now, some things which you have to understand here is that the area vector which is perpendicular to the now it is actually the normal to the surface this area vector this is going to make an angle theta with the magnetic field okay so this is phi we can also call it as b here but uh, let me just call it as phi so this is maybe making an angle theta with the uh, magnetic flux okay so this is a b c d okay let's quickly do look from this particular direction so if i look from this direction what will i see i will see a tilted coil like this right so I will see something which is like this. So this is A, B, C and D. So here the current is going inside the paper. So cross current is coming out of the paper. So dot. Okay, All these things are over. So you know that the torque is defined. So the torque is defined as the force multiplied by the perpendicular distance. So the first thing what we have to find is the force. Okay. So you know that the force is always, uh, you know that it's already equal to force is equal to I L cross B and L has the direction of I or you can use it I cross B also because I and L have the same direction, but this is the actual equation, right? So here the magnetic field is from left to right. So let me put it on the top. So this is the magnetic field and here also this is the magnetic field everywhere. This is the magnetic field. So for this particular conductor A B segment a b segment what is it current is going inside so something like this and this is the field b i b and this is 90 degree therefore the cross product also will be 90 degree so i cross b will give a clockwise rotation therefore force will be downwards okay so here the force is going to be downwards like this okay, this is force at a b similarly if i do here so here it is current is coming outwards this is b it is like this counterclockwise direction counterclockwise if you move a screw it is going to move upwards so this is force cd what about the segment bc and da so segment bc and da so current is something like this here this is current and this is the b okay and uh, i cross b means this is going to have a clockwise rotation okay clockwise rotation and it has to be perpendicular to both these two things so if this is this plane here the force will be something like this so the force will be here from so it's a clockwise rotation right so you are having a uh, inward force so f is here like this so this is f at uh, bc similarly for da segments you can see that it will be like this this will be f for da so let me just uh, mark it in this diagram here so this will be the force inward force for fbc and this will be outward force for fda okay so what is the net force here if you see the net force here it's an interesting result so the net force uh, see fbc and fda are going to have this same value because the conductor geometry is exactly the same and the current is also the same so these two forces will cancel out each other because they are equal in uh, magnitude and opposite direction similarly fcd and F wave A B also will cancel out each other. So F net will be equal to zero. Does it mean that the motor uh, loop is going to be stationary here? No. The F net zero equal to means F net equal to zero means there is no translationary movement. There is no translationary 
movement what is the meaning of translationary movement what it means in simple terms is that the coil in this condition will not move in this direction it will not move in this direction it will not move in this direction it will not move in this direction that means that for example this pen is the coil it cannot move like this it will not go in this direction it will not go in this direction but if it is allowed to rotate in an axis like this it can rotate for that we have to find whether there is an effective couple present here that means is there a couple of forces which are going to produce a torque here okay so let us observe the forces once again you can see that fbc for example this is that segment uh, of conductor fbc is like this and f <coughs> ad da is like this so that means for example this is the thing here one force is like this and one force is like this so it will have any rotational motion is there any torque involved no there is no going to be no torque involved here because the forces are collinear in nature and you also know that torque is force into perpendicular distance between the forces so when the forces are collinear there is not going to be any perpendicular distance also that perpendicular distance is zero therefore you are not having any torque and anyway it is common sense right for example i am having this pen here here one force is there here one force is there so will it rotate like this no it will not rotate and it will only stretch out but there is no torque okay so let us observe the next two forces which are fcd and fab you can see that between fcd and fda they are actually not collinear they are actually a couple and therefore they will provide a torque which will by common sense you can see that it will make the coil rotate in the clockwise direction so to derive the expression let us draw this figure a little bit more neatly okay so i have derived the four, uh, sorry i have not derived i have uh, drawn the diagram neatly here so i have just drawn the area vector a here making an angle theta with the flux okay so now let us just move this area vector a little bit here so that i can just find out the angles here required so this angle is going to be same as this angle which is theta here okay so if i find this particular angle x here this perpendicular distance between these two forces what is torque force into perpendicular distance so this distance will be nothing but 2r into cos x right this will be 2r into cos of x okay so what is the angle x we have to find now so you know that this angle is 90 okay because the area vector is in perpendicular to the plane so this angle also will be 90 that means x plus 90 plus theta equal to 180 degree so x equal to 90 minus theta okay that means this will be equal to this perpendicular distance will be 2r cos 90 minus theta which is equal to 2r sin theta okay so what will be the net torque the torque induced will be equal to you know that the forces due to the segment bc and da are not present they are not presenting any torque okay so the only torque is due to these segments here so this will be equal to the force f so fcd and fab are same value so f into perpendicular distance is 2r sin theta so 2r into sin theta so what is this value of f you know that f is equal to bil into the sin of angle between i and b or l and b okay so uh, what is the angle between i and b so i is like this okay and b was like this okay this angle is actually 90 degree right see this is going inside and this is from flux here so this cross you can see here it is the current or the length component also you can take so this is into the paper and this is like this from in the plane of the paper the angle between i and b will be 90 degree therefore f will be equal to bil so that means the torque induced will be equal to bil into 2r into sin theta okay simple expression so if you put a graph here what will you get with respect to theta the torque induced will have a sinusoidal waveform and you can see after the value pi here so this is 2 pi if you want you can put pi by 2 also after the pi you can see that the torque value is negative now this is the torque reversal which i have told uh, to you in the dc machines module so if you want to know about that please go to the dc machines lectures and see what is this torque reversal all right 
so one torque positive one torque negative anyway we are not bothered about this thing here because in ac machines this torque reversal will not occur okay so the torque induced is bil 2r sin theta now uh, let us just take this equation to the next page here so torque induced equal to bil into 2r into sin theta okay now let us uh, derive an alternate expression for the same thing here so you know that b by h is equal to mu all right now here you are having a uh, current carrying conductor okay so that will produce a magnetic field okay that means i can tell that b loop divided by h is equal to mu okay this b loop is the magnetic field which is produced by the loop okay for example this is the loop in that tilted position so this is the current direction right this is the current direction so this is having a anti clockwise movement so using the right hand rule you can see that the b will be something like this okay so this is what i am writing here now you know that usually we write h is equal to ni this is for a coil okay but you know that for in a dc machine uh, sorry in an ac machine there is not only coils there is a geometry involved therefore in the textbook what they have written is that b loop i can write it as mu divided by g into i so this n term we are replacing by this g term which is actually depending upon the geometry of the machine okay so when we actually derive the different expressions for uh, synchronous motor synchronous generators we will have a proper value of g but this is a very general equation so b loop is equal to mu i divided by g and let us substitute all these values there so torque induced is equal to now it is time to name this particular uh, b here so this b here this is actually by the main magnetic poles right so let us call it as bs which indicates that it is the stator magnetic field okay so we are coming closer to ac machines from this you can derive an expression for i so that we can substitute here so what will be that expression it will be b loop into g divided by mu so i is there so l into 2r into sin theta okay so what is l into 2r this is l okay this was 2r so l into 2r is nothing but the area of the loop okay so i can write it again as bs into b loop divided by mu into g into area of the loop multiplied by sin theta now here again we can just uh, bring all the uh, constant terms together so constant term is what all g is constant a loop is constant mu is constant b loop depends upon the current bs depends upon the strength of the magnetic field and sin theta it is the uh, angle difference so the constant terms are g a loop and mu so g a loop divided by mu into bs into b loop into sin theta okay so this is again a constant so to simplify our equation we can write it as k into bs into b loop into sin theta okay now we have to write this equation in terms of cross products because you are having a sin theta uh, you can write it as b cross s or b loop cross s so which one is correct because you know that cross product is not uh, a cross b is not equal to b cross a a cross b is equal to minus b cross a so there is only one expression which you can use so let's find what we have to do so let us take the same figure once again so this was the figure right <coughs> and this was bs okay main field flux and this is the force and this is the force now in this particular condition what is the direction of motion it is a clockwise motion so the torque is a clockwise motion now what i have added here is that this current in the conductor will produce the b loop in this direction right and this is same as the area vector also so this this conductor here you know that it will produce a magnetic field right so in this direction means it will produce something which is like this okay so that is what i have put here there are two magnetic fields okay now our torque equation was k into bs into b loop into sin theta okay so now if i put bs cross b loop if I, for example i put bs cross b loop okay what will direction i will get the direction will be a counter clockwise direction see bs crossing with b loop the torque direction is a counter clockwise direction but the clock direction uh, is not a counter clockwise direction it is a 
clockwise direction okay that means i have to cross bl towards bs like this so it will be bl cross bs all right so torque induced will be equal to k into b loop cross bs this is put so that it uh, matches with the real conditions all right so from here we can take some very important points which are very crucial for ac machines okay so the torque induced depends upon a couple of factors here one is that it depends upon the strength of the stator magnetic field that means bs second one it depends upon the strength of the loop which is b loop okay it, so it indirectly depends how much of current is going to flow third one it depends upon the sign of the angle between bs and b loop okay you know that this area vector a is making an angle theta with bs right and area vector a and b loop are in the same direction so sign of the angle between these two and fourth one is a machine constant okay so these four factors are very important another very important thing is that you know that the force causes a clockwise rotation all right so for example this is your let me put it here this is your b loop and this was your bs okay so what is happening what is happening here is that the torque induced actually makes the b loop align with bs see it is a clockwise rotation so b loop is going to get aligned with bs okay so why is the torque in what does the torque induced do the torque induced tries to make b loop get aligned with the bs and this is very important the torque induced tries to align b loop with the bs so in when we actually discuss about ac machines specifically uh, motors like that this b loop will become the rotor okay b of the rotor and bs is the b of the stator and this point is going to be valid anywhere in case of motors all right so i hope you have liked today's session don't forget that there is a dc machine module also in the same uh, channel you can just visit the playlist to see that and if you like this video please like share and subscribe my channel and i'll see you in the next video thank you